All right, all right, we are back. This is the last video for of four of the overcoming the objections, all right? So we're gonna jump right in. I can just save that money in my savings account. Now that's always a good one because the first thing that comes to my mind is, well, if you were able to save that money, we wouldn't even be here today, right? But don't you say that because that can rub somebody the wrong way. So you want to go this route. There's a few problems with that solution. One, how many times have you tried to save a lump sum and for whatever reason you had to use that money for some unforeseen emergency? Whether it was your children that called you because they needed the money or you got a leak in your roof or your car went down. I mean, it happens all the time, right? And they usually, and you shake your head, they usually agree to you. Second, when you die, ma'am or sir, you are not going to be able to withdraw that money from your bank account. And in most cases, the state is going to lock your account for estate purposes, meaning that your loved ones are not going to be able to access that cash right away. That's going to be a big problem. More importantly, what if you were to die next week? Do you have enough money in your bank account that would actually help your family with their final expenses? Right? You want to make them think about that. So you won't have enough saved up to cover those expenses while investing in your final expense plan. Let's check and see if we can get you covered for day one. What that means is in the event, God forbid, that you were to die within even your first two years of paying into your benefit, the full plan would pay out as long as we get everything correct on your application. How's that sound? Right? So you want to go back always ask the questions, make them think about, you know, their savings account or what has happened in the past 50, 60, 70 years, right? Because most of the time we're sitting with the senior. So just make them think about that. All right. I need to talk it over with my children. You will hear that quite often, especially brand new agents. I remember hearing that in the beginning because I was giving so much information to these seniors that I was they were getting confused. I was over-educating. I had just received my life insurance license. I knew about the annuities, you know, um, whole life term policies, just all of it. And I just was going over everything. And they don't need to know all of that information. You want to stick to why you're there, asking the questions to fill their need, and that's it, all right? However, if you get the, I need to talk to my children about this, this is what you can say. Unfortunately, your children are not going to want to talk to you about your final wishes. This is something you're taking care of to take the burden off of your children when that day comes. This is not really something that you need to ask them permission. But let me just ask you, are they the ones that are going to be paying for this benefit? right? Because if they're the ones paying for it, then yes, you need to talk to the children. However, if that client is the one paying for it, you want to just back them up. No, they're not going to pay for this. This is something I'm paying for to make sure that things are in order. Okay, great. So all I really need you to do right now is pick a plan that is comfortable for you. And then when your plan comes in, I would love to be able to sit down with yourself as well as your children to make sure that they understand what their job is going to be when this day comes, because it's very important for them to understand the family support piece. All right. So let's go ahead and see which one of these are more comfortable for you to get started with today. And I'm going to make sure to put in, excuse me, to put a note down that whenever this policy is mailed, that we're going to set an appointment to go over it with the family. All right. And guess what? Beautiful thing about this program is when you receive this pack, you still have 30 days to make a decision as to whether or not you want to keep it or if you want to send it back and get a full refund. But the blessing is in God forbid something were to happen, you would be covered while you guys are still thinking. All right. So let's go ahead and get this down. Move on. All right. I need to run this by X, Y, and Z before I start. Really, it's a smoke screen, okay? Um, and again, you want to go back. It's kind of the same thing you want to say for your children outside of they don't want to talk about it because it could be a brother or sister, um, financial advisor. So that's exactly how this program 
is set up. Right now, all you have is a brochure and what I've told you, which I don't expect you to remember. You will receive the actual policy and the funeral planning forms that you and your loved ones are encouraged to review and fill out as soon as possible. Lincoln Heritage gives you four additional weeks to review this information while covering your final expenses. God forbid something were to happen during that time, at least you would not have left the burden on your loved ones. Remember, this is a day one coverage. Only say that if they are final expense. If you decide after one month of coverage that you don't want it, simply return the package and Lincoln Heritage will terminate your cash benefit and your loved ones will return to being at a financial risk. However, you will receive your first payment. All right. Again, you want to bring that back to your cover, the very first payment. And guys, even if for our company anyway, if you wrote them a modified plan and they died of an accidental because we put accidental with all of our plans, that plan is going to pay out even if they died within the first two years because they did not die because of the medical reason. They died of accidental. All right. So that makes that plan day one. That's awesome. Okay. Last thing or next to the last because somebody added a new one. This doesn't seem like enough coverage for the premium. I want you to do me a favor and say their name. I need you to look at this as a cash benefit, as a bucket of money. Your coverage is 10,000 or whatever the dollar amount is of, of money that Lincoln Heritage sets aside every single month. When you make your first payment, this bucket of money is sitting to pay out to your loved one and you wanna use the beneficiary's names, all right? Your funeral is paid for. If you pass away in the first month or the first year or the second year, your, pet, your funeral is paid for. You keep paying your premium and your bucket of money stays the same. And when you pass away, we will pay your loved one within 24 hours of claim approval, a cash payment. One big bucket of money. Leaving some cash is better than not leaving anything at all. Wouldn't you agree? Giving them a visual of this money sitting there to give to their loved one definitely helps out with that rebuttal. Sometimes you have to remind them, unfortunately, you did wait until you were 73 years old. And as we talked about in the beginning, insurance is based on your age and your health, right? If they are day one, I always like to high five them. Thank God you did take care of your health up to this point and we're still able to provide you with the day one benefit. That is unheard of for most individuals your age with a life insurance benefit. I understand the premium's a little bit higher, but again, some cash is better than none at all. And don't forget the family support. So being that you may not be able to afford a $15,000 policy, but you can afford a $7,000 policy, let our program Make the phone calls to get the best cost possible for your family because they will really need it at that time. All right? So which one would you like us to go ahead and get started with today? Time right back down. All right? And then one that was added to us is I need to pray about it. All right, guys. So I I only heard that, gosh, maybe once or twice. Again, it's it's... I've seen a lot of people sat with a lot of a lot of clients, a lot of leads, potential clients, people that didn't sign up. And I've only heard that twice. I completely forgot about that. So um, thank you for adding that to one of the comments. I need to pray about it. Right. Some people you will you will notice that they are very spiritual. They are um, you'll, you'll notice in their house they have, you know, Jesus everywhere, you know, every just everything. You don't want to push people into signing anything. However, you do want to talk to them and say, okay, listen. Now for myself, when it has happened, I told them I completely understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write up all the, all the information. So that's why I also keep paper apps as well as I can do, you know, apps on my iPad. I'll keep the paper apps for those types of individuals that are not 100% sure but I know I'm not coming back to this area. I'm done working. I'm going back to Pittsburgh. I'm not going to come back for that one person. So let's go ahead and get everything written down. We're going to get all your information. All right. Let me go ahead and 
call it in. So out of these three plans that I showed you, which one are you thinking that you would most likely go with? Let them pick one. I put a star next to it on my money sheet. I call it into Lincoln Heritage. I get a reference number, right? I know that they are approved for the final expense or the modified. And then I tell them, I need you to go ahead and give me the check. A lot of times they give you the check still. Sometimes they won't. It depends on how much rapport you've built. And it also depends on if they trust you. I have walked out of homes with a check that was just signed to Lincoln Heritage with a blank dollar amount because they weren't sure which one they wanted to go with. And they just really wanted to take a day to think about and go over their budget. No problem. I have the paperwork filled out. I have the check, right? That's more of a commitment than them telling you they want to pray about it. You leave and then they set another appointment. You come back. You know, there's a lot can happen. You also want to remind them that, as I'm sure that they're aware of, tomorrow is not promised to anybody. If they do not have any life insurance at all, I am pressing a little more because I'm letting them know, listen, I already have you approved for day one coverage, right? I understand you want to pray about it. If you can help me, like, what, what do you want to pray about? Whether or not you want to take out coverage to help your family? Like, you know... What if you die tonight? What is that going to do for your family? Right? Um, so you just kind of want to step back from the table a little bit from the paperwork and just really start talking to that individual and ask them a couple questions. Like, you know, if you don't mind me asking, I don't want to really pry or anything, but, you know, what would you like to pray about? And I have prayed with clients because um, I am a believer, so... Sometimes, you know, we'll go ahead and hands to hands and, and start praying and I'll let them pray and, and let the spirit run. I pray for people that were sick, people that didn't have any money, couldn't do anything at all. You know, it is what it is. Sometimes you'll find that this business can be a ministry also. It's not always just about writing an app and getting paid. God is going to bless you down the road anyway for helping. So, you know, that one is, is one that you really want to ask the questions. And I've had an, a lady and a husband. And I walked in and I could just feel the love in the house. I felt that they were very spirit led and um, they wanted to pray about it. And I said, you know what? I just felt it. I said, I completely understand. They did have life insurance, uh, but they didn't have final expense. So the husband, they were like, and I was in the area the next day. So I told him, listen, I'll be leaving for Pittsburgh tomorrow. I will be leaving out of here at 5 p.m. Feel free to give me a call back before that time and let me know what you guys have decided. Um, other than that, I'm going to get you marked out of my system. Nobody else is going to come over here and, and talk to you guys unless you fill out another form. But please don't fill out another form. Here's all my information. Call me. Either way, call me and let me know. And they did call me the next day at about 2 o'clock, left me a voicemail because I was in a home and stated, listen, we prayed about it. We feel great about this decision. Please stop by on your way back into Pittsburgh. We are home for the rest of the day. I went back and I wrote the husband and wife. So again, you want to just feel the client. You want to really be there to help. Don't be a salesperson, all right? So guys, that's it for the uh, set of objections and rebuttals that I had on file. Of course, there might be a few other ones, but those are the main objections that we do receive. And again, you see I have my one of my vision boards behind me. We are going to be talking about vision boards and the importance of that coming up soon. So thank you as always for watching. Make sure you put a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you think of any other objections, put them down in the comments below. I always respond um, and I'm here to help. If any other videos that you guys would like to see, make sure that you post that. We have a lot coming up. Um, I'm going to be having videos posted for the different reports that we receive, how to read those reports and what they are used for within our business. Um, could be good for other agents that are in different companies. I'm sure you guys have some uh, reports as well. So it may be beneficial for you. Either way, please make sure you subscribe, share my information and my videos, and we are here to help. All right. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening and we'll be back soon. Vision boards.